Okay, welcome back. I um, hope you enjoy the sports. And if you're a Bassa fan, well, um, you have a few days to recover. That was just abysmal. Almost as bad as Hearts of Oak and Arsenal. Hmm. You choose to support better teams. Anyways, let's get into our first conversation this morning. And the Public Interest Accountability Committee has presented its semi-annual report on management and use of petroleum revenues from January to June 2021 to the government. Now, in December 2010, Ghana joined the League of Oil Producing Countries, successfully attracted a number of oil exploration and production companies who have, in partnership with the Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, been at the forefront of petroleum production in the country. The build-up to the attainment of a decade of petroleum production was adversely affected by the outbreak of the coronavirus disease in 2020. Growth was subdued. A lot of exploration companies halted their production and expansion plans in Ghana. Now we've introduced the COVID-19 vaccines, the first half of 2021. Global economic growth is starting to rebound and most restrictions are gradually being eased and measures are being put in place to allow for work to continue. In Ghana, the economy has begun to show signs of recovery in the period under review. We'll be talking about all of this as Piak marks 10 years of existence. And this morning, I'm joined by Mr. Isaac Jamina. He is a coordinator, Piak. Good morning, Isaac. Good morning, and good morning to your, view, your viewers. Well, thank you for joining us, and congratulations um, on 10 years. Thank you very much, and thank you to the people of Ghana to whom the resource belongs. Um, Piak does not exist for itself. Piak exists mm -hmm. for the people of Ghana, and so we celebrate with the people of Ghana. Okay, so um, it's been 10 years. You know, we've had oil, we've had good times. Um, l let me just ask you this, this question. You know how a lot of... Um, of arguments come up when we have we don't have enough money or when we have shortfalls and you know everybody asks you know what but we're, we're, we're getting more oil we're getting more oil we're getting more oil and um, what do you think about that argument that somehow you know all of this oil that we found the fact that we have three um, sites as opposed to one which we started with how do you feel about how much reliance we place on on that sector well thank you uh, once again um, well, it is, it is a Find crude at the pump uh, go down um, because Isaac, we ourselves Isaac. will be producing. Hello, Isaac. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm going to ask you to just, yes. if you can, please reposition yourself a little bit. The internet connection wasn't great, so we actually haven't heard any of what you've said so far. Okay. So, so please, can you hear me now? Yes, it's, it's clear. So if you can please start for me, please. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> this is, in service of, of the people of Ghana. Indeed. So, um, like I was saying, the big announcement was made in 2007. Ghana um, eventually um, at last had found oil and gas in commercial quantities, even though we started with only oil. And um, we were going to get um, revenue, I mean, big revenue that would um, help in economic development, building infrastructure. Uh, it was going to um bring another impetus to the economy so everybody was very high in expectation even though the the, the oil field then was just one the jubilee field but uh so um preparations began towards production and you know that usually it will take about five to seven years to prepare very well regulatory assistance in peace I mean, develop systems that will receive uh, revenue 
will lead to um, optimization of the uh, benefits of the resource. Ghana shortened the circuit. We did 2007, 15th December, we had our first oil pour. And um, yes, to very rich. Um, I will get to the end, very, um, $444 million in 2011, and it kept going up until our best year in 2014, $978 million. And, um, uh, but as you know, the price of crude oil on the world market is very unstable by a whole lot of factors. And so in 2015 and 16 in particular, revenue tumbled, fell very heavily. And uh, the 978 we had in 2014, we had about 300, uh, over $300 million in 2015. And then even further, $200 million in 2016. So um, this kind of volatility is the reason behind PIAC's um, proposal and recommendation that government should be worried in its reliance on the revenue from crude oil and production and its activities. Um, for example, um, education has been selected as a priority area. Um, Isaac, it, it looks like it looks like your your well, either way the internet is not great, so I'm losing you um, again. Not sure if you can hear me. Hello, Isaac. Um, okay, well, we're going to try and reconnect um, with Isaac, but let me just run you through some of these details. So um, we know that oil production from 2010 to 2020, so 10 years. And um, the total amount of crude oil produced was 453-387-699 BBLS. Um, total petroleum receipts, so that's barrels, so 2011 to 2020, $6.55 billion. Um, dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, so that's um, okay. Now this is how um, the petroleum revenue was disbursed um, from 2011 to 2020. So the Ghana Heritage Fund got $585 million. The Ghana Stabilization Fund got $1.387 million. The Ghana National Petroleum Corporation got $2, um, million, two, two billion actually. 2 billion, 003.83 million. So they got 30% of the revenue. And then annual budget funding amount was also about 2 billion, which is 39%. So the budget funding and then GNPC got the lion's share of um, the petroleum revenue that we got over the past 10 years. And then the Ghana Stabilization Fund. And then, of course, the Ghana Heritage Fund. So this is how um, we've been spending our oil money over the past 10 years. You remember that a lot of conversations have come up about the fact that um, free SHS is possible, you know, because of oil. And so, you know, definitely we've seen some of the things that um, the oil money has done, but um, uh, not all of it, maybe. And um, we're still trying to connect to Isaac. I'm not sure if we have him online now. Isaac, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, fantastic. Um, I can hear you better now. So um, okay. you were just talking to us about why the government shouldn't rely too strongly on um, oil revenue. Yes. Yeah. So I was saying that the current government selected education as a priority area. And it is under this priority area that we have the three senior high school funded by, uh, from petroleum revenue. And um, in 2017, PIAC organized a technical roundtable on the funding of the free senior high school and the need for government to diversify the sources of funds for the program. The committee thinks that the program is a great idea, but because of the volatile nature of petroleum revenue, to rely on petroleum revenue as 
the source of funding for the program. Um, make the program run at some appreciable rate. To the extent that if we have the situation we had in 2016 and 14, where in one year, 2014, we had return revenue as much as $978 million. Then in 2016, we had as low as $250 million. Assume government had budgeted on uh, the revenue for 2014 and had been optimistic that we have had 978. Reasonably, we can expect a billion the following year. And so budget for the free senior high school to support so many students, provide uh, these facilities for schools and things like that, build these, build these school blocks. And revenue drops to as low as $250 million. How will we make up for the difference? Especially when, over the period, the Ghana Civilization Fund, which is supposed to cover up for gaps in revenue, has been cut and has been brought so low as we speak. The, um, the, the, the maximum balance that we can have on the Ghana Civilization Fund is $100 million. So it makes it difficult for the Civilization Fund to fulfill its raison d'etre, its, its primary purpose for, 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 for being established. So these are the issues we are discussing when it comes to government's reliance on petroleum revenue as a source, the only source or the, the main source of funds for its programs and projects. Well, I mean, one may ask that, okay, if the government doesn't rely on oil, um, then what is it going to rely on? I mean, already we're seeing the suggestion of the e-levy, you know, which is 1.75%, you know, tax on Ghanaians, you know, and that's quite um, a hit to the pockets. But um, are we considering maybe expanding our oil field so that we can, you know, almost, as it were, rise to the challenge of providing that cushion for government, or are we kind of at a peak? Well, thank you for the question. It's an interesting discussion to have, especially now. Um, now that we are talking about energy transition, um, especially in Europe, which has led to um, international oil companies from Europe and the U.S. Um, reduce their investment in Africa mm. uh, to the extent that um, some international oil companies operating in our waters, operating in our territories, have left. Um, we have Exxon Mobil leaving and um, some others reducing their activities. I think in your intro, you mentioned that uh, from the PIA 2021 semi-annual report, um, coming from, from, from the um, effects of the pandemic, a lot of the companies are now beginning to go back to the obligations contained in their PAs and, and all that in their uh, POD. Um, it is a discussion we should have um, so that we can exploit the resource for our own use, more so to reposition our national oil company, the Ghana National Oil Company, so that it has the technical, it has the technological, it has the financial muscle it also has a human resource to be able to play the lead role of, of exploratory work in our territories to lead to discoveries that will lead to increased production uh, for government to have greater stake. Because as you look at the various petroleum agreements we have, even from Jubilee through to SGN, um, you see that Ghana's stake is not so much. And so what comes to government in terms of revenue based on the uh, contract is not so much. So you're looking at GMPC being strengthened, repositioned, so that government takes growth and we make more revenue from, from oil and gas to support the, the, the economy. It has always bothered me, Isaac, that um, in, in all of these negotiations and stuff, we, we seem as, as a government, as a people, to be getting um, relatively little revenue from, you know, um, these explorations and the drilling of oil and all of that. What exactly is the problem? Is it because we're not negotiating properly 
or I, I don't know. And how do we get to the point where we're actually, you know, really actualizing the, the full benefits, the full potential that these oil wells have to offer for us as a country? Well, thank you. Um, you know, the, to guide the spending of revenue from petroleum, um, the Petroleum Revenue Management Act was uh, passed into law. It, it came to be. Now, the Act clearly stipulates um, how the revenue should be um, collected, assessed, collected, deposited into the petroleum holding fund, allocated, disbursed, managed, invested. Okay, no, I'm not even talking about what we do with the, the revenue. I'm talking about the fact that we actually don't get as much as we could in the first place. From the contract oh, negotiation. At the contracting stage. Yes, at the contracting stage. Yes. Well, it is, it is a conversation we should have as a nation. You know that exploratory work is very expensive. It, it's capital intensive, but it's also risky. So take um, an international oil company that comes to Ghana to do exploratory work in our waters, relying on seismic data. And um, you think... A, a well that costs you about $50 million, $60 million. If you hit dry well, you go home with your debt. I mean, the government pays nothing, contributes nothing to what you have incurred in sinking the, the well which ended up being dry. And if you make a find, that is when we begin to talk about the fiscal test. Assume that we get in the news that government... Um, has invested about $100 million in exploratory work in a field they consider to be promising. And they hit a dry well, so it means that $100 million has, has gone to waste. We didn't find anything. How would Ghanaians take it? So we should be ready to accept what comes with the risk of exploration. That if we don't make a find, it is like um, what we call in economics, uh, alternative use of money. The money we could have used to build infrastructure is what we have used for the exploratory work. So we should be ready to accept that we will take the risk. If we make a fine, great, then we have a very big stake. If we don't make a fine, we will accept to go with the, with, 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 with the, with, with, with the cost that has come with it. It is a conversation we should have as a nation and, and agree to go in a particular way. If you are risk averse, then your returns will be low. If you take on risk, you will make more returns. These are basic principles in investment. Okay. I mean, that definitely makes a lot of sense. So I, th I, th I think maybe we just feel like we're not yet at um, or in a space where we can take such a risk, um, especially if, you know, we don't know um, for sure what the benefits are going to be. But um, the vice chairman of PIAC is also joining us um, in this conversation, Nasser Alpha Mohammed. Um, good morning, sir. Welcome. Hello, good Nasser. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Are you okay? You good? Yes, I'm doing fine, please. Awesome. Okay, so um, Isaac and I were just talking about revenue um, and the burden um, that the budget um, places on oil revenues and um, uh, how the money is distributed and, you know, kind of moving from a place where we're not so dependent I'm, on... I'm losing you a bit. I didn't hear much of that. Okay, I was saying that, so Isaac and I were just talking about the revenue, oil revenue, and how dependent our budget seems to be on revenue that we're getting from oil. Um, for, it to, for, for the government to be able to carry out, you know, projects and how that's not always a good thing um, for us. So what, what are your thoughts, your thoughts on, on that? We're looking at the distribution of revenue um, and the budget takes, I think it's the second um, largest or possibly the largest actually um, allocation of revenue from oil. No, um, you know, um, since 2011, Okay, it would seem like um, Mr. Muhammad's line is not great. Um, so, I Isaac, are you there? 
Yes, I am. Okay, okay, so your line is definitely better. Okay, yes, so we, we've... I wanted to add this point to the point I made earlier. Okay, sure, go ahead. Yes, so um, one point I want to add is that at the time um, we made a find in 2007, mm -hmm. little was known about Ghana as a place where there was high um, probability of fine, like... Um, I mean, what we, we, we usually say in the, in the industry is that uh, Ghana was not known. So we didn't have the strength to negotiate for greater sake. Okay. So now our field, our territory has been erased to some extent. At least we have three fields that are operating. We have other fines that are yet to come on stream. So it means that there is greater assurance to investors that our field has high probability of, 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 of the fine if someone comes to invest. So it puts us in a better nego uh, okay. negotiation position to improve what we get in terms of percentages um, at the contracting stage. So that was the point I wanted to add to the point I earlier made. Okay, that, that's a really good point, and it totally makes sense. You know, if, if we've been able to find three, then chances are, you know, there's a fourth one, there's a fifth one, there's a sixth one. Um, as opposed to when there was nothing at all. And I remember um, when we first found oil, it was a very, very exciting time um, for the nation, you know, to discover that, oh, you know, because it's always been Nigeria, you know, that we've, we've kind of considered us, you know, the oil producing country. So it was, it was really exciting. I remember many years ago, but really exciting. Anyway, so there was a committee um, that Piak put together um, to, to give some recommendations to the Minister of Finance um, when it comes to the revenue use um, and how, um, you know, where we're sharing that money, spending the money, and um, also the cap on the GSF and then um, provisions with ABFA and GIF. Do you want to take us through um, some of the recommendations that the committee was able to come up with? Um, Isaac, your line is not great. Can you reposition yourself for me? Hello. Hello? Is it better now? Um, not really. Maybe just move a little bit more. It's still breaking. Hello? Yeah, okay. Let's, let's give it a go and see. Okay. So... I wanted to find out if we were talking about our recommendations over the 10-year period. Or... Okay, you, you want us to find out if we're talking about your recommendations over the 10-year period or... Okay, unfortunately, um, I can't really hear Isaac. I know he's asking me a question, but um, it's difficult to hear him. We're going to try and reconnect. Um, but if you're just tuning in, we're talking about PIAC and um, also the distribution of the money that we've made from oil over the past 10 years and some of the recommendations that a committee has put to the Minister of Finance um, concerning some of um, the funded, the oil-funded pro projects um, at the sub-national level, and um, also the fact that the GSF has a cap of $100 million, if that's the best um, decision that we made, or whether that should be um, reviewed. So we're speaking to Isaac Jamna, who's a coordinator of PIAC, and Nasser Alpha Mohammed, who is a vice chairman of PIAC. Um, at the moment, both of them, um, their lines seem to be quite bad, so... We're not really able to um, get clear communication. Let me just... Isaac, are you there? Yes, please, I am. Okay, great. You were asking a question. Uh, yes. So you had asked for the recommendations the committee had made in its statutory report. And I wanted to declare whether you meant recommendations over the 10-year period or just for our latest report, the 2021 semi annual report. I mean, I think we can start with the, the most recent one. Okay. And then, you know, maybe ex extend into over the last 10 years with some of the, the recommendations that you feel are, are very urgent or priority. Okay. Okay, so um, 
I think for the semi-annual report 2021, the, there are two main recommendations. You look through the report, there are others, but for the purposes of our discussion, I'll just focus on two. Mm. Um, in the year 2019, the Supreme Court of Ghana um, made a decision mm -hmm. that in computing the amount of money that is to be allocated to the district assembly common fund, the petroleum revenue that is to be spent in the budget is 5% of that is to be added to the, uh, to the pot. So it means that um, petroleum revenue now becomes a part, a contributor to the district assembly common fund. Now, for the year 2021, in compliance with the decision of the Supreme Court, the Ministry of Finance allocated an amount of 129 million Ghana um, to be dispersed to the District Assembly Common Fund for distribution to the various metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies for various projects and programs. Now, the, the uh, committee recommends that there should be guidelines to guide the spending of the uh, petroleum revenue at the sub-national or the district um, level so that it will not be just part of the allocation and disbursement that is made to the TECF and spent at the assembly level with not as much accountability. Uh, so, uh, so that PIAC will be able to continue its uh, monitoring mandate that the PRME has given it. So it should be clear that, um, let's say, an amount of 500,000, 200,000 has been given to, let's say, a Dentang assembly, and that they are going to use that for, let's say, building a classroom block located at Frafraha, so that when you go to the assembly, they will be able to lead you to that specific project for you to inspect, for peers to be able to monitor and inspect that the petroleum revenue that went to the assembly has been used for this purpose, and there is clear evidence of the usage and the management of the revenue. So that is the um, recommendation the committee made. You know, the Petroleum Revenue Management Act is being reviewed by mm -hmm. the government. Mm -hmm. So PIAC recommends that we should take advantage of the window of the review and make provisions in the uh, Act to cover the spending of petroleum revenue at the subnational level. Okay. That is the first recommendation the committee made in the uh, 2021 semi-annual report. Okay. The second recommendation is that we should grow the Ghana Stabilization Fund, the government should grow the Ghana Stabilization Fund to fulfill its primary mandate of helping to plug um, revenue gaps where there are if um, the revenue expected by government is not met, is not realized. What the committee found in its work in the first half of 2021 was that the quarterly ADFA, that is the amount of money to be spent in the budget from petroleum revenue for a particular quarter, was not met for the first quarter of the year. And so the, the, the government had to fall on the consolidated fund to support. It did not go to the stabilization fund, which should have been the right fund to have been falling upon support for the gap. And um, PIAC is recommending that the gas stabilization fund should be grown because the fund has been cut and now the balance is around $100 million. And it makes the fund not as strong to fulfill its primary mandate of helping to cover for um, expenditure gap as a result of uh, uh, revenue shortfall. So these were the two recommendations made by the committee in the 2021 semi-annual report. Okay, are there any um, other recommendations from the 10 years that, um, but, but I feel like if there were, maybe you would have captured it in the annual report, but are there any other outstanding recommendations that maybe you feel that the government should pay more attention to? Um, well, if you, if, if, you, if you allow me, probably there are quite a number, but the first and the most um, 
important that I would like to highlight, I'm sure the vice chair may want to add, uh, is the fact that the default position of the Petroleum Revenue Management Act is that petroleum revenue spent in the budget should be guided by a long-term national development plan. That is the default position of the Act. But the Act also concedes that the process of putting together a long-term national development plan takes time. And so it provides in Section 21 that in the absence of a long-term national development plan, the Minister for Finance can select over a three-year period not more than four priority areas out of the list provided in the Act for spending petroleum revenue. Right. For the past 10 years, Ghana does, does not have a long-term national development plan to guide the spending of petroleum revenue. And PIAC has made this recommendation repeatedly. As we mark 10 years, we continue to make that recommendation. We continue to reiterate that recommendation that a long-term national development plan should be developed by the nation to guide their spending so that um, selection of priority areas will not just be in line with party manifestos of government in power, but that it will be part of implementing a long-term national development plan that the, the nation as a whole has acceded to, has, has developed. So that is one key recommendation uh, made over the 10-year period. I would like to take this opportunity to reiterate. Okay. Well, thank you very much, um, Isaac, for, for all of that, you know, for educating us and um, for the recommendations and, and for helping us understand um, a little bit more why we are where we are. Congratulations to Piak. And we're looking forward to um, another 10 years of um, very, very successful work and oversight um, so have have a good have a good day. Are you are you guys doing anything to celebrate? Well, the celebration began way back in March. The president launched it, and um, we have since been uh, undertaking a number of activities. But let me mention that one key activity we are undertaking is to engage the citizens of Ghana. We think that the tenth anniversary is not for fanfare. It's a time to reflect on how well we have done as a nation in managing the resource we have. So we have gone to the Northern Belt and engaged citizens there. We had a forum in Tamale for the five regions in the Northern part. We've had a, such a forum in the Middle Belt, in the Brenta Assembly Hall in Kumase for uh, regions in the Middle Belt. We have also had a fora in the Kendi and Otakrati for Central and Western regions. We've gone to Kokorubia for Eastern. We've been to Ho for Uti and Balta. Today, we are having a forum for Greater Accra. And it is for citizens in Greater Accra to reflect on how well we have done. So we invite as many to come to the NAS Hall and join us to reflect on how well we have done as a nation mm. in managing over 6.53 billion US dollars that has come to government over a 10 year period. Okay, well, thank you. Sounds good. Um, thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Really appreciate your time. And that was Isaac Dramna, coordinator for PIAC. PIAC celebrating 10 years. Um, and you can join them at the NAT Hall um, if you'd like more information um, on how the oil revenue has been spent and what the plans are. All right, so we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, so much more for you here on the AM Show. Don't go anywhere.